Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to um, go through a series of exercises so that we can understand how the water and the paint work together. So that when we come to do wet in wet, we'll have a better idea of the circumstances we need to know about for it to work effectively. Um, it's not exactly the blind leading the blame, the lame, but it's, um, I've got my crutch handy, shall we say. See how we get on. Right, now then, if you take any colour, I don't mind what colour it is, and you put it on the page like that, please do so. Right, and I hope everybody in their own home is doing exactly that as well. No, that's the wrong way. That's the right way. There we are. Sorry, friend. Oh, if I sit down, I might. Right. Now, if you've done that, take some clean water and drop it into your uh, paint and see what it does. You can see it's changing the way the paint granules are going. So take some more water and drop it in the same place. And keep on adding water to that place and you can see what it's doing is driving the paint to the edge and the middle where you're dropping it is getting whiter and cleaner. And if you can be accurate. Now what you've done is produce a cauliflower. And sometimes you want to do that. Um, for instance, if you were painting a carnation and you wanted one of those with those raggedy ragged just right at the bitter end. If you paint um, the end with the red and then you drop water to push the paint towards the edge, then you'll get that paint right towards the edge and it will just sort of fade gradually into the white and look quite effective. So that's what happens when you put very wet paint into, into paint, especially if the paint itself is wet. As it dries, um, well, I've got a bit over here, which is a bit drier. It, the shine's gone. So I'll see what happens there. Come on, paint. It's doing the same sort of thing, precisely. Now, if that was absolutely dry, it probably wouldn't do very much. The water's the next one, Pet. Can you? Right. Okay. So let's see what we can do about washes and things. So take your paint, any colour um, that, that you want. Um, I'm going to use ultramarine. And I'm mixing some in my paint. Colours. There it is. I'm mixing some in my paint palette here. So that I've, I've got what we normally do is to get a wash like that. Now I'm going to make a shape along here as if I was painting the sky. Now supposing um, I was going to do put another colour in there. What you normally do, and everybody does it this way to start with, you clean out your brush so that you've taken away the paint you've just had, so to speak. And then you pick up the colour that you want to drop in, say a purple. Right. Now, you've washed your brush so that's full of water. 
you've picked up your paint, which is also full of water, and this is full of water. So if you drop that, come on, you drop, put, put it in. There we are. See, I put it in there. Can you see immediately? You need to move the um, thing over, the camera over. You can yeah, see yeah. that immediately it's spreading into the paint that's already there. Uh, because the paint is wet, the paint you're working into is seriously wet. If we, um, if we were going to do it into dry, I haven't got any dry yet, but um, th that wouldn't happen. You'd just get a blob. Sometimes you want them to spread a little bit, but you don't want them to spread that far. Okay, are you, have you caught up with me, everybody? Mm -hmm. You've made your second wash, having mixed the colour, and you've dropped in some paint of a different colour, and they've gone. Now, it's two things about that. One is they were both wet uh, when, when you put them in. Your brush was wet, the paint surface was wet. And the other thing is those two paints had the same amount of pigment in them. So because they had the same amount of pigment, they just mixed together. You might as well have mixed it on the palette for, for all the good you were doing. Uh, while it's still wet, if you go um, dry your brush on a rag, so you haven't got so much water in the brush because that reservoir is full of water. And if you dried the water out just by touching a a rag, that helps because you remove some of the water. Now, if you take some of the purple straight from the, well, I'm using purple, straight from the paint, and you put some of that um, into your surface, it still runs. Yes? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. But it doesn't run so far. Right? It runs, but it doesn't run so far. So that's the sort of thing you want to, to remember. Now, if I go back to the red, I'll just move it over so that you people can see it. This corner of the red here is absolutely packed with water because that's where I was dropping the, the, the water in. If I take the really thick paint straight out of the tube or straight out of the pan and put that in, all that happens there is you don't get much colour, it's very little colour, uh, even if you push it, it's wandering through the water somewhat. So the crucial thing to remember when you're working wet in wet is you have to have a balance between how wet the paint is that you're working in and how dry the paint is that you're working in. If we go back to the blue, if I look at it now, the sheen, there's a sheen on the red because it's still very wet, but the sheen is beginning to go off on the, on the blue there. So look at yours and check it out and see if you've got a, an area of paint where the sheen has gone off. So if we pick up, um, well, you can even do stronger blue. I'm taking the paint straight out of the, the pan. Um, I'm drying off the brush by re resting it on uh, a rag, and then I put that dot in there. Now that is wandering a little bit, but it's much more controllable now. And how, if you make the spots smaller, they stay small. Make the pots bigger, they stay bigger. If you if you tilt it, you will and leave it like that tilted. You will eventually find that most of the paint runs down into the wetter paint down below. But where I put a big spot, it's got quite a nice furry edge. 
And sometimes you want that um, edge to be not so distinct. Um, in the picture of Uluru, you've got this big mountain with a very dark shadow cast on it. And this is um, where this kind of technique will make a big difference. That's, so we've tried it um, with water and found that what it does is push the paint to the edge uh, of the wet patch. We've tried it where the paints were of equal value, same amount of pigment in both. And in that case, the addition just disperses and hardly shows. We found that if we go in very, very much darker, then um, it's more contained. And it's more, even more contained if we can put it in when the paint that we're putting it into has lost its sheen. Whew, right. <laughs> okay, so let's pick up some blue now from our thing and let's give ourselves quite a nice big area so we can play with it. So that, that's quite dark. How, you, you might want to put a shadow in there and you don't want the shadow to move too far, but you do want it to move. Okay. If you so, move your paper up, ma'am, we'll be able to see what you do. Thank you. Thank you. I keep pulling it towards me. Because, yeah, there we are. Right. So this is wet. This is actually quite wet. And I, and I do want it to move. So I'm going to pick up some, just a touch of water on my dry paint. And I'm putting in a line here. Now, if this was a rock, you could get it to, to move up the rock like that. Well, what happens if I increase the amount of paint I put there? It moves up a little bit and it pushes what's already there a little bit further up. So it is suggesting um, that, uh, the, that the rock has shape and it's doing it quite um, interestingly uh, and giving you some sense of, of shape. So let's try doing that with uh, an actual, something that looks a bit more like a rock. I've just got to go and get some clean water. I'm sorry, I'll be back. Did you catch that? She says they're practicing. Which is what I'm doing. And not getting a, at all the result I'm asked for. Yes, I've got a clean piece of paper, but you, if yours has got room on it, just carry on. I don't want red on it. Right, okay. So we have here, um, let's find a sort of rocky colour. So I'm taking the burnt sienna, the raw sienna. I've got some raw sienna here. It's quite pale, and I'm going to paint rock shapes so that they're, they're straight along here and they've got a sort of rounded edge there and here there's another one I've left a gap between them right so they there's my rock shapes in the rocky ground in the rocky sandy ground now, I can start by drying my brush 
and taking some of the um, prosiana and putting that where I think my rock is going to um, have shape. So it's going to have a shadow down here and it's, the sun is coming from this direction so it's going to have shadow up here too. And this one here is going to have shadow down here and along the edge there. In fact, this part here is also going to be in shadow. Sorry. There we are. Also in shadow. That, now, on the screen, that looks quite dark. On my page, it doesn't look very dark at all. But, um, there we are. Now, that is quite, still quite damp. If I add any more damp paint to that, it's going to dash all over the rock. The second lot of paint I put in was a little bit thicker than the paint I put on originally. The third lot of paint I put in has got to be even thicker than the second one. If it's as thick as the second one, it will just go over everywhere where the second <coughs> one is. If it's thinner, it'll push the paint to one side and you, and you get a bare patch. You might want it, you know, panic, but this is a matter of control. Okay, so I'm now going to pick up um, a bit of purple and I've made it a little bit thicker, I think. Now, if you mix, when you go from one to another, you, you, you know, you've got, you've got to have your wits about you. So I think this one is slightly thicker than the one that's already there. So I'm going to add to the dark edge here. Now bear in mind the paint above it is, is thick. This round here and if you watch it you should see the paint moving slowly up. You can see it's putting up little spider legs and uh, creating um, an indeterminate edge, which is what you want. And then down here also, this, this would be in shadow because that rock is creating a shadow. And along here, and of course, the whole of the back of this rock is in shadow from the sun. It's called having a good imagination. <laughs> right? Uh, just while I've been talking, that little bit of paint I put on has travelled even further up into the rock. Okay. How are you getting on? I, I've actually made mine too strong. But it's barely moving at all. Um... I hope the people online are okay. Would you, um, if you're not okay, would you let Rachel know? Yeah, I will keep an eye open. Right. Now, supposing I want to go even darker, shall we say this area here needs to be even darker where the two rocks cross each other. So I need to put in some more paint. Could be the same color could be different colour, but it has to be thicker. So I take all the water out of the brush on a rag. Don't, for heaven's sake, grab the bristles and heave with a rag. Just be gentle. They cost money, these things. Um, and I'm going to go into ultramarine because it will show you what's happening. My ultramarine is nicely moist now since it's quite wet. And I'm going to put in, just at the corner here, a little way along there. That line there is called the contact shadow, believe it or not. These things have names. Quite wonderful. Right, now down here is also going to be dark. 
very dark because that rock is casting a shadow on it. And it will be dark across here. But the really intense shadow won't go all the way up there because there will be some light higher up. It would be more like that, I would think. Now, can you see, even though I'm not touching them, those other paints there are creeping beautifully up the rock. Mm. And um, actually, they look quite rocky. So I say it myself, what shouldn't? If I'd had the patience to let this rock dry after I'd painted it, before I did this one, it would look even more effective because there wouldn't be that little white line between them. Right? Now, can I make that even darker? Well, I suppose I could. Let, let's um, clean the brush, take all the moisture out, and be really sure you've got most of it out, and go, I'm going into Prussian now. And I'm making quite sure that the my paint is practically neat. I don't know if this is going to make any difference because the ultramarine is so dark, but there, yes it does. That is really almost black. There. And it's, um, it's going to make quite a big difference. Now, when you get it that far, you might think, well, my rock aren't as smooth as that. Um, and I want to do something about it. Thing is, if that's now dry, and you put paint on it, and it, it looks dry to me now. Yes, that's dry. And you put paint on it, you're going to get a hard line. If the rock is a rounded rock because it's been um, smoothed by the waves, it won't have any sharp, jaggy edges. All its edges will be rounded. So um, putting it on dry paint, paint is going to produce a hard line. What can you do about it? Let's have a look. Right, if we go back, uh, am I going too fast? No. Right. If we go back to this blue one, which is drier, if I want to put more paint on there and I want it to spread, because it's dry, um, it won't do it. Let's, let's try. That's not going to spread at all. Have you tried? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I go again. I'm working on a dry surface, a dry painted surface. If I put uh, dry paint on a dry surface, I'm going to get an edge. Right? Quite a sharp edge. If I want something a bit more diffuse, then what you've got to do is wet that surface area again with clean water. Take the water out of the brush again, pick up your excess paint that you want to put in and put it in to the new, newly wetted surface. And that way around, you can do what I did to the rocks on an area that's already dry. So you can recover dry paint to get this very soft, wet in wet um, uh, effect by re-wetting the surface. Right. So I think it might be an idea if we tried a few more rocks at this stage, because um, dashing straight into Uluru now would be quite silly because it's only 10 minutes out or thereabouts. Uh, so we'll, we'll do a few more rocks. So, you clean your brush, you use pale, uh, 
it doesn't have to be, but you, if you use pale raw sienna to make your basic rock shape, and uh, because we're using soft edges, we want our basic rough rock shape to be rounded. Um, and then another rock shape up here. Another one here. So I, I'll put two or three rocks there. And I started off by adding the intense um, raw sienna. Sorry, I've got to stop and think. Life is tedious. So I'm putting in the contact shadow and suggesting because the sun is coming from here, that there's a shadow here, this rock, and this rock is also in shadow because that rock is sh shading it. We've got a contact shadow there. And this rock here is practically all in shadow because he's a big fan. Might be a little bit at the tail end there catching the light because the sun is high. It's called having a vivid imagination. Now I could, if I wanted, go back with some more of the very seriously thin, thick uh, raw sienna. Ten minutes. There, just to emphasize things a little bit. I'll pull this down a bit, push that up a bit, and then that one is up a bit. We've got a progression there, which is a bit better. Right, clean your pet, your brush, pick up the purple, mix it so that it's. Thicker, but not very, very, very thick. And see how you get on putting that in. If, if you start somewhere where it's less important, uh, you can always rescue it. This one. Strong shadow there. But all this one is in shadow. It's still spreading. Looking back at those, can you see how it's spreading on these? Still spreading. It'll go on a long time. I think this is where the Paint fairies come in. Mm. Right, clean your brush. Pick up some quite thick blue paint. Now I'm taking the paint straight out of the pan. The pan has got some water in it, so the paint isn't neat in that respect, but it is a lot neater than what I've been working with because I have been working with mixes that I did in mixtures that I did in the pan, so they're wet. This I'm taking out of the little pan of colour itself that has some moisture in it. Now I want to differentiate a bit, so I'm going to only put that here. Again, this is imagination. And of course this one is a lot darker. Yeah. And this one will have a deeper shadow here. Not all the way. And you can, if you like, take that. Oh, there is a bit. Mm 
Now, that was actually quite wet paint, so I'm going to take all the moisture out of the brush. Pick up some really dry paint and see what that does. Notice I am not adding any moisture to the area that I'm adding the paint to. The moisture is already there and I'm just adding colour into the, and using the water that's already there to create my shape. This area here is dry and I want to get a very thin contact shadow. I can do that if it's dry just by using a little line of paint. This needs to be very much darker there. Can anybody spot the deliberate mistake? No. There's no shadow on this side of this one. <laughs> right, so we have a perfect opportunity there. That's dry. What do I do? Wet it. Brilliant. Yes, so clean water. I want to put a shadow on here now. I use clean water where I want the shadow to be and take it just a little bit further than I want it to be. There. I can then repeat the procedures I've just been doing. Take some of the raw sienna, the darker raw sienna, and put that in where it's wet and let it roll around a bit. That's giving it quite a nice shadow there. Clean the brush, take the paint out. Pick up my purple that I mixed in the palette so it's got some water in it. Four minutes. And put it round there. That's throwing up a nice shadow again on this tall rock here. Probably go across here a bit too, wouldn't it? <laughs> go into the really dark blue paint for your strong shadow. But it doesn't go over the whole thing. You just put it where it's needed. And finally, if you want to make it really, really dark, put in something like Prussian blue or Prussian blue is about the best. It's a real beef of a thing, isn't it? Mm. And if you put Prussian blue in thick, you're practically black. So it's, it's really good. So if we put that in there to create our strong shadow between the two. And in there, our strong shadow between the two. Then we get something that looks a little bit like a rock. Right. So that that's how to, to train yourself to know what will happen on what surface. It all depends on the amount of the ratio of water to paint. And if you can get to know it sort of almost automatically, then you'll be much more successful when you're painting um, pictures of varying kinds. Now, what I expect you to do is to practice a few more rocks or anything else. You could do a doorway um, you know, you, with your the uprights of the door, and then you want to in, introduce the, um, the door itself. You'll have to move your paper up, and you have two minutes exactly. Right, so you've got your your door there. I'm rushing because I'm leaving white spaces. Now you want to suggest a shadow, so if you take Prussian blue, 
and decide where the shadow is going to be. If the sun is coming this way, this side will be in shadow. So you can make, make that side a bit shadowy and then there will be other areas that will be a little bit more shadowy and then there'll be a little bit of shadow there. Do you, do you see how it works? Yeah. It doesn't have to be rocks. It can be anything where you want the shadow to be gradual. You could do it with trees. Um, that, that would work quite effectively too. Next week, um, have your drawing of Oluru complete and we'll tackle that as a picture using this technique to create those big shadows on the rock. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs>